Matthew, 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 the 18th chapter, Matthew, the 18th chapter. I'm going to extract one verse out of the NIV version, puts it like this. Matthew, the 18th chapter, verse 19. Y'all see I got my Joel Osteen microphone on, uh, so don't expect a whole lot from me today. Uh, I'm going to do a lot of teaching today. I may holler one time, but I got my Joel Osteen on. Please tag and share those of you that are sharing with us via the internet. Tag and share. Get someone that may need this word. Matthew 18, verses 19. NIV puts it like this. Again, truly I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about some things, One thing, if you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Ain't got to depend on nobody else. Don't have to run behind nobody else. Don't have to be let down by nobody else. But my Father in heaven will get the job done. Out of a series that we're going to be dealing with for the next couple of weeks, I dare you to pray. I want to hit y'all with this message, this topic this morning for a few minutes. The power of agreement. Is that okay? The power of agreement. Now, I don't want to break up any friendships, and I said that, and I feel like I'm going to probably do it a little different than what I did this morning I feel the spirit kind of pushing me, but I don't want to mess with any friendships, but I I want to tell you that could it be you got the wrong people around you? Like, 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 like the young folk would say, for real, for real. Like, could it be that you got the wrong people around you and instead of them pushing you, And motivating you to get you to the next level in your life. Could it be by design that they are there to hinder your progress? And they don't even know it. Like they're really trying to be your friend for real. They're really trying to be in your circle. But they just don't have what it takes to make your baby leap. Y'all didn't get that. Mary and Elizabeth greeted each other. Both of them was pregnant. Mary was pregnant with Jesus. Uh, Elizabeth was pregnant with John the Baptist. Jesus and John was cousins. But the Bible says that when they spoke to one another, the baby leaped in her womb, and it had not leaped before that time. There's something about when a baby moves that lets you know it's okay. That it's alive. Do you have people around you that when they open their mouth, when they talk to you, they say something to you that what God put on the inside of you begins to move? Do you have the right people that helps you stir up your dreams, stir up your aspirations? When you get to the lowest and you feel like throwing in the towel, you need people around you that's not going to throw you a pity party and make you get up, shake yourself, and bust the move. Look at somebody say, bust the move. Could it be that you have people around you that's there to hinder you? Even Judas, even in betraying Jesus, was part of the whole process. I want to go ahead and dispel the rumor that this was something bad that he'd done. Yeah, it was bad in what he's done, but Jesus already knew that Judas was there to betray him. And he told him, he said, whatever you get ready to do, I need you to, grandmama would say, hurry up. <laughs> Hurry up and get it done. Listen to me. We got to stop trying to hold on to relationships that do not promote pushing us to where God wants us to be. Whatever it's going to be, it's going to be. We have to stop investing in people that cannot reciprocate it. Some people, you know that you're going to be the one that's giving to them, but you got to have people around you that can touch and agree with you, believing what God wants to do in your life, even though it 
it has not manifested itself yet. Do y'all believe that this morning? Husband and wives need to be coming together. Girlfriend and boyfriends need to be coming together. Listen to me. Parents and children need to be coming together. And it needs to start in your house. I said this at 9 a.m. and I'm going to share it with you. We'll spend more time trying to match a blouse or a shirt with a pair of shoes than we do in prayer. Y'all quiet. I know what I'm talking about. Uh, listen, y'all ladies would take a shirt from one store, walk down to another store, just to see if the color coordinated with the shoes that you saw in that store. And when it don't, you take the blouse back and don't get the shirt, the shoes, nor the blouse. And we'll spend two hours doing that. But we can't pray for one hour. If we're going to see God manifestate anything in our life, we must first build it in prayer. Somebody say build it in prayer. If you're going to pray to get it, you got to pray to keep it. I'm going over here. Lord, send me a hug. Somebody say pray to get it. And then you get the wife and you get the husband and you don't even come together in prayer to keep the marriage or to keep the union. Whatever you pray to do to get it, you got to pray to keep it. Anything you start in the spirit will take staying in the spirit to keep it. And anything you build in the flesh will take flesh. Any relationship is based on flesh don't last. Oh, he looks so good. Man, she a dime piece. People get old. That Coca-Cola figure, after a couple of children, be a two-liter. <laughs> he had nice chest, now it's here. <laughs> if that's what you built it on. But watch this, if you built it in the spirit. The Bible says, no, no man after the, but what? After the spirit, you must be one in the spirit. And when you're in the spirit, it takes you staying in the spirit to maintain what God has given you. We don't pray. And this is why we're teaching about prayer because we're getting ready to start our fasting and praying as we get ready to go into it. But I can't have you go into it doing it the way you thought you knew how to do it because it could be wrong. We, I see a lot of praying on Facebook. I see a lot of Facebook live platforms. I see a lot of people coming on, and they're doing more hollering than they're doing anything. They're doing more fixing their hat and fixing their glasses and licking their lips and still don't operate in no power. I don't understand how we got churches on every corner, and yet we still infested with crime. When we say that we have the power, if we have the power, it should be some changing going on. It should be some things happening in our homes. And I want to talk about two forms of power. There's two forms of power that we need to understand and learn. Watch this. Deutimus is one of them. Everybody say Deutimus. And the next one is, is, is Exusia. Everybody say Exusia. Dunamis is a strength or a type of explosive. It's like a running back hitting the line. It's an explosive. Exusia is an authoritative type of power. We got a lot of people that got a lot of strength but no authority. We dance good. We shout good. We speak in all types of tongues but no authority. We have all types of forms of godliness but no power. How is it that we check in the church every Sunday and we still can't take back our finances? Y'all quiet. I told you I got my microphone on. How, how is it that we got good dance steps? We'll fall out and spit up and do all that type of stuff. But then we cry about people talking about us. How is it, how is it, how is it that you got advice for everybody but can't give your own self prayer to get out of your situation? We talk about everybody else's husband and everybody else married and you still by yourself. 
Where is your power? How is it that Jesus Christ, I know this one's going to be an amen message. I'm a, we're going to holler. I'm going to get you there. How is it? Listen to me. Jesus Christ is Lord of your life in whom all blessings flow. And yet, as soon as you see one obstacle, one problem, the world comes to an end. How is it that he delivered you before, but now he cannot deliver you? We're not going to keep checking in, church. We're not going to keep doing this if we're not going to take back our life to glorify God. Come on, say amen. So dunamis, dunamis is that type of power. I said it at 9 a.m. I said it again. It's kind of like the state trooper chasing you from Alabama to Mississippi. He has a gun. That's that explosive. He has the badge. That's his strength. He has that. But once you cross that Mississippi state line, he has no authority. He has to radio ahead to let the Mississippi State Trooper know that we have a fugitive running and he's coming your way. Well, the enemy should be the same way. There should be certain lines he should not be able to cross to get to you. And there should be certain lines that should not be able to stop you from crossing if you're operating in the authority and the power of God. Nobody should be able to stop you, and you shouldn't think that nobody should be able to stop you. We give lip service more than we give our lips to service. We do. We can do it. I, I, I've been in many services and got plenty of shimmering lips. Somebody's saying, what is he talking about? Well, you keep living, you'll see it. They walk around in lip shimmering like they got they 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 cold. <laughs> Come on, anybody know what I'm talking about? We've been there, but we don't get put our lips in service. Do you not understand that what you say is powerful? That if you open your mouth and begin to declare and decree God's word back to him, he has no choice but to operate on your behalf. But we'll sit there and do things because we saw other people do it and we think it's right. And then you're wondering why stuff ain't working for you is because you're putting stuff in the play that ain't designed to work. You imitating somebody dance don't scare the devil. You walking around, pretending to talk in tongues, come and let me see you drive a Honda. They talked in tongues on Lion King. Akuma Matata. No power. How do you speak in tongues and can't speak to nobody? Well, they, you don't know what they done to me. So where's your power? You don't know what they said. Where is your power? When are you going to stop letting what they do to you stop you from operating in who God called you to be? I'm coming. I, 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 we, we can't, listen to me, we can't just do lip service no more. You're, you've been in church too long. And this is why the world wants nothing to do with us. Because we be hypocritical. Boy, y'all don't like this. We're so hypocritical when it comes to us operating in the power. Listen, they get more respect for the people out there in the streets than to do the people that's in the church. So this discourse, listen to me, that Jesus is talking about in Matthew 18 is talking about how we're supposed to have high virtues and high value and how we're supposed to be operating and anticipating taking over the community. He even says in Matthew 18, he says, if the person have a problem with you, he said, listen, first thing you need to do is go to that person. Don't go on Facebook. Somebody said, I'm preaching to whoever said it right there. Yeah, don't, don't go on Facebook with the subliminal post. Take it to that person. And then if they don't hear you, then take you to take you another witness with you that you may be heard. But we don't got so much now that we thumb thugs now. We go right here, and the enemy wants you to do that because you're not glorifying God and you're not resolving the issue. 
Come on, this is a sobering moment because I need you to be mature because we done spent 50 years. You know, they didn't have Facebook back then when mama and them was going through issues and people were going through problems. But they take, I'm going to talk to you. I'm a man. I'm going to bring it to you. I'm going to talk to you to your face about it. And then if you don't hear me, then I bring me another witness. But we can't keep doing this Facebook thing. We can't keep doing this social media thing, and we, keep, can't, we can't let it run the church. We got more people now on social media or social media platforms misleading people because they can get enough people to follow them, and then because they got a lot of followings, then you think they are oiled by God. But they're leading you down the path that is so ungodly that they ain't called. Jesus said, in that day, many will say unto me, Lord, didn't I? Lord, didn't I? He's going to say, yeah, you did. You had a lot of following on Facebook, and yeah, you did pray. He said, but I I don't know you. Everybody is not called. And we have to be careful who we're listening to. Come on, y'all. Say amen. amen. So listen, we got the baby. He says, binding and loosing. He said, you should, whatever be bound on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever be loosed on earth shall be loosed in heaven. What he's talking about, when you're binding something, you're binding it by an indisputable authority. And when you're loosing something, it's by an indisputable authority that whatever you're loosing here on earth is because it's already been done in heaven. Nothing you should be doing here should, not, it should be different than what God has already established up there. Come on. Thy kingdom come, thy we know that, don't we? Or what? Where does it say? On earth as is what? So all you're doing is repeating a pattern or establishing a pattern that has already been given to you in heaven. But if you will go and try to imitate somebody's prayer, listen to me. God, is, God doesn't have to honor that. We repeat stuff because it sounds poetically cute. Lord, when I woke up this morning, the four walls of my bedroom was not the four walls of a funeral home. And then y'all, yeah. I'm not saying, I'm not, I'm not saying nothing wrong with it, but then you'll go and grab it. And then you'll try to memorize it. And watch this. You ready for this? And you don't even have the oil to pray like that person that prayed it. You don't know the demons they fought. You don't know the, what the problems they went through that made them pray the way they're praying. And you just grabbed it because it sounds cute. And I remember a scripture in the Bible where the demon, listen to me, there was somebody trying to imitate the disciples. And the demon looked at him and said, Peter, I know. Come on. Paul, I know. But he said, but who are you? And when you're trying to imitate somebody that's anointed, you'll run to a demon that'll whoop your wig off your head. You better be careful who life you're trying to imitate because the reason why they're probably praying like that is because of the hills and valleys that they've gone through. And they're all that's qualified them to pray like that. So we got to understand that the authority is indisputable. Let me keep going. So we talk about prayer. We go on Facebook Live talking about prayer. We even holler in prayer. Yeah, some of us imitate that. We work more on the holler than we do the holiness. We hollering no oil on it at all. Demons, demons ain't trembling nowhere. And then you're wondering why your problems has increased. We need to understand that we need to have, everybody say relationship. We have to have a relationship with God. If anybody that should be able to talk to God should be his children. Come on, say amen. Yeah, I, was, I talked about Julius this morning. I said, if anybody, his children can get to move, they can get him to move. His, his daughter, Jada, and JP, they get, he'd be posting pictures, and they'd be having ice cream. Mother eyes at Mother Leonard, they'd be having ice cream sitting in the back. He done took them to get peach cobbler, and this way before dinner time. They ain't had no dinner, and he's sitting there talking about, and he got his hands up like he don't know how they done it. And because of them being their, his children, they know how to move their father. Well, if that works for Julius Peterson and, and, and disregard how mama don't want them to have that stuff, and he'll go ahead and still get them the snacks when they're not supposed to have it, how much more would your father move for you? Come on, if you know how to move him. So we understand that we talk and we holler in prayer, but we want people to hear us in prayer. But we don't know that if God is hearing us. We pray for other people's satisfaction instead of God being pleased. 
We should be more concerned with God hearing our prayers and talking to people, uh, talking to God more than we talk to people. Here's what I want to give you, and I'm moving to a close real quick. Understand this, that God is not emotional. You can't cry hard enough to make him move. Did you hear what I just said? Your, your deadline, your due date does not make God in a hurry. Your mismanagement is not God's crisis management. Just because you messed it up, it does not make him move by Friday because you said, Lord, come now, Lord, come now. Come now, hurry up, Lord. I need you to do it right now. That don't mean he moving right now. God only. <laughs> come on, y'all see, y'all hear the prayers right now, God. If you don't come right now, I don't know what I'm going to do. And let me help you out. When you come to God, you can't come to God weak in your spirit. You must come to God knowing who you are. Do you understand what I'm saying? You are not going to make him move faster because you feel sorry for yourself. God is not attending your pity party. He holds to his word. That's the only thing. Your tears, it doesn't matter how many enemies you have. It doesn't matter how much you need him to be in the rush. He's only going to hold to his word. How many of you have life scriptures? You don't get it, do you? I'm going to teach it to you. How many of you have a scripture for every problem that you may come up with? That before you go get on the phone and gossip, you need to go to the book and get the gospel. That if what scripture, come on, Tara, what scripture, Brittany, do you have when you're broke? Come on. Come on. What scripture, what scripture do you have? I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. I'm a lender and not. What scripture do you have when the doctor gave you a bad report? Come on here. He was bruised for my, there it is right there. He was bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of his peace was upon me and by his. What scripture do you have when you got more haters than you can handle? When the enemy comes in like a flood. Come on here. The spirit of the Lord will lift up a standing. Come on, y'all. One may come in one way, but they're going to flee from me. Seven. Your spirit. Somebody say my spirit. My spirit should be able to regurgitate that. But you'll sit there and keep going to church and satisfy your flesh. Your flesh likes the good singing. Your flesh likes the musician. Your flesh likes how they dance and all that. But your spirit just is hungry. And when you feed your flesh more than you feed your spirit, your flesh is the one that's stronger. You wonder why you want to slap them? You wonder why you want to cuss them out? Because your flesh is stronger. You are flesh and spirit. And the one you feed the most is the one that's in operation. And this is why your spirit starves. And when it's time for you to operate out of the power, you got nothing there. What power am I talking about? What's in you? What's in you? What word is in you that when trouble hits you, you can count on and pray it back to God and tie his hand to show up on back because it's his word. Come on, somebody say it's his word. Yeah, it's his word. He has to hold truth to his word. And if you don't pray his word back to him, he don't have to, he don't have to, he don't have to obey that cute prayer unless you pray in his word. And you ready for this? And when your spirit is starving, and your flesh is being fed, it becomes the stronger person, and then you wonder why you're not advancing. You wonder why you're not growing. You've been preached to, but you haven't been taught. It is time to get your pencils out. It's time to get your paper out. It's time. I remember we used to highlight scriptures in our Bible. People used to sit there and highlight, and now we just sit there and we don't do nothing. And we're falling more now to stuff that if we were to walk two blocks in our grandmama in them shoes, we couldn't make it. And we should be a lot more advanced than what we are. And we're not because we haven't been taught. 
we haven't been educated that, hey, it's two sides to me. And you have to feed your spirit. You have to get in that Bible and you have to read it and you got to get somewhere where you can get a Bible teaching church. And you won't get fooled by a lot of this foolishness. That when you come together and you touch and agree with somebody, God says, I'm in the middle of that. I'm showing up. This is why you can't be unequally yoked. Am I this okay? This is why you can't be, um, this is why marriage is supposed to be for the kingdom. This is not a civil thing. This is a kingdom thing that your partner for life should be somebody that is spiritual like you. That when you're down, they're able to speak into your life and pick. Uh, I, 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 I need somebody to pay bills. No, you need somebody to pray. You need somebody that can get God's attention on your behalf. That when the enemy comes at you, they can strengthen you and vice versa. Come on, y'all. And let me help you out. And you need to teach your children how to pray. Y'all hear what I'm telling you? That you, when you're not on the college campus, they know how to seek the Lord for themselves. When you're not around, your voice is ringing loud in their head for them to do the right thing. Because they're going to be going places you can't get. And let me help you out. If you don't get on your knees, they're going to be on your heart. But if you get on your knees, God will take care of what's on your heart. You got to teach them about the Lord. Come on, say amen. Amen. Let me get out of here, y'all. So we need to understand that, no, your worries, your deadlines don't move God. Your pity, poor mindset do not move God. The Hebrew said that if you come to God, you must come first believing that he is God. What am I saying by that? It makes no sense for you to pray if you ain't going to believe. Jesus used to tell me, hey, look, do you believe I can do this? Why are you going to talk to God about it if you don't believe he can do it? You must first believe that he can do it. Your spirit yearns for fellowship with God. This is what your prayer is. A lot of times we get talked and we get caught up in how we sound. I don't know how to pray. You know how to talk on that phone, don't you? Huh? Girl. That's how I started our prayer. I just talked to God like, like, come on, God, look now. I, this I did it. I didn't know. I was. I was. I, I wasn't church. I went. I didn't have. I didn't. Mama, mama. I didn't have no pre-programming. I didn't have nothing to follow. So when I talked to God, I talked to him like he was one of my partners. Look, it's your boy again. You see what they doing now? Come on now, you. You know, look. I'm trying to do this Christian thing. You better help me. Come on, y'all. You better. You better look. I, and I talked to him just like that. That's how you have to start off. And then when I start learning scriptures, look, see, y'all, y'all better than me. I didn't know no scriptures. I couldn't tell you if Moses was in the lion's den or the Hebrew boys led them out of Egypt. They laugh. See, y'all ain't laughing because y'all don't know the difference. (laughs) Some of them laugh because they know the difference. But I didn't know no difference. And so I had to get scripture and stop trying to imitate people and imitate church. Church is so fake now, it don't make no sense. And the people are still struggling. A person can get a microphone and I can tell good right as soon as they get it whether or not they got some oil on them. I be looking like, oh. Ain't nothing to them. And now everybody, everybody, they walk around, everybody, everybody. How you doing, doc? (laughs) And no power. I'm not going to pastor you with no power. You're not going to keep coming here. And looking at the flesh first. Girl, you see his eyes. And he got that good hair, too. Brush, he bow-legged in the right leg. What their prayer life like? When you lose your job, are they going to pray for you? Or are they going to leave you? 
Come on, when, you, when you're needing help, are they going to pray for you and believe God for you, or it's time for them to exit then? Okay, and let me, let me help you all out. Let me, I'm, I'm going somewhere with this. Understand this. Your flesh inherits no good thing. It cannot inherit the kingdom. Only your spirit. Let me give you these two scriptures. I'm out. And this is why I'm taking time because we're getting ready to get into it for the next couple of weeks. It's going to get better. This one look hard because you got to chew on it. Well, I'm tired of you wanting milk. It's time to get on some meat. Milk is when somebody else chew it, like a mother breastfeeding, and then the baby gets the milk. No, I need you to grow some maturity teeth and chew this meat. I need you to come in here with your notepad, your pencil, your highlighter. You got your Bible only. I need you taking notes. I need you to grow. We've hollered all last month. I, did, I gave you the, I don't holler so much, I don't hurt my shoulder. And if you can't stick with me for the next few weeks, then I don't know what to tell you. Because I'm not your clown and this ain't no circus. Because if your life don't get better, then I haven't done my job. 